Hi, and welcome to Labor Economics. Uh, my name is David Hebert, and I'll be the professor in this class. Uh, what I want to do today is sort of provide you with uh, an introduction to the course and start doing uh, sort of a basic micro-review. So labor economics, at its core, uh, is basically the study of labor markets using the lens of economics. Uh, the application of economics to this particular subject uh, is interesting and deserving of study for two main reasons. So first is the fact that something like 70% of national income comes from the sale of labor. So labor takes up a really big part uh, of our economy. And two, uh, the strong emotional response that people have over issues related to labor and wages, right? And I'm sure you've seen this. You know, some of you, I'm sure, have uh, gotten into discussions with people about the minimum wage, uh, perhaps about economic inequality, uh, all kinds of things. And people have very strong emotional responses to these things. And that's fine. Uh, but as you, as you might remember from uh, your previous economics courses, uh, economics begins basically by, by sort of setting aside uh, those emotional concerns and attempts to think about these things in a purely analytical way. Okay? Uh, labor economics becomes interesting especially interesting uh, once we delve into uh, the basic framework of thinking about things. So how do we understand how much someone gets paid and why? How do we figure out where they're going to work and what they're going to do for a living? Right? These questions are, are interesting and deserving of study. Okay? Uh, as I'm sure you've you know, seen, uh, some people will put up you know, the familiar uh, supply and demand graph and they'll say, you know, here, this is everything. Uh, that you need to know. Right? See, you know, these lines cross, P star, Q star, done, right? And at some level, this is correct. I have described all of labor economics right there, okay? Uh, but there's more to it than this. There's much more. There's different markets that we need to talk about. There's different considerations. We need to figure out, well, maybe this supply curve doesn't slope up. Maybe it actually slopes backwards like that. What would that look like, and why would it do that, right? So we'll be talking about all kinds of crazy things like this. This class, <clears throat> as you've seen, is a is a 300 level class, right? It's upper level, and as such, it's it's high. It's meant to be challenging. Uh, but that said, I it will be challenging, but I also want it to be uh, both fun uh, and informative. So at any point, if you have a suggestion for a topic or anything that you find uh, particularly interesting send me an email uh, and I'll definitely see if I can work it into an upcoming lecture or maybe you could even create some of the materials you know we'll see what happens uh, as I say in the notes the syllabus that I've provided is merely a starting point right so I have the final say over what we cover uh, and there are some things that we're required to cover that I just we have to go over uh, but I want you guys to feel free uh, at, at any point during the semester to email me uh, different suggestions or or topics or articles or you know newspapers or, or anything that you find that's interesting and pertains to the class and if you do that uh, I will definitely be generous uh, in rewarding uh, extra credit for that okay how much uh, is gonna be you know context specific it'll depend on the quality of the submission uh, and whether or not we actually use it so I can't tell you how much you'll get right now, uh, but you'll definitely get extra credit if you if you do that. Okay, so uh, in the next video, we'll be starting our, our review uh, of Econ 222 Microeconomics, and we'll continue that uh, next week as well.